Hi, my lovely Kim students. This is Ms. Horn, and welcome to a tutorial over writing formulas for binary molecular compounds. You're going to love these because they're super, super, super easy. The only thing about these is once kids learn them, they want to apply these rules to every single type of compound. So I'm going to forewarn you that this type of naming only applies to molecular compounds, also known as covalent. And just to review, remember that covalent or molecular compounds are made up of two nonmetals, and sometimes you'll see in there a metalloid. So what do we not see in a molecular or covalent compound? You will never, ever, ever see metals, okay? So if there's a metal in a compound, you don't name it like this. All right, let's begin. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to write down the chemical symbol for the first element. You can add a subscript to indicate how many atoms of that element are present in the compound. See the prefix chart to the left. If no prefix is written, assume only one atom of that element is in the formula. Mono is omitted with first element only. Then you'll write down the chemical symbol for the second element. Add subscript to indicate how many atoms of that element are present in the compound. Again, see the prefix chart. So this is the prefix chart that I am referring to. Take a moment to write it down. It's also on your review. So the different prefixes are mono for one, di for two, tri for three, tetra four, penta five, hexa six, hepta seven, octa eight, nana nine, and deca ten. A lot of these are familiar to you because they're prefixes for shapes you're familiar with. Like a triangle has three sides, a pentagon has five sides, an octagon has eight sides, etc. Or a tricycle has three wheels. So you're familiar with some of these. I'm going to forewarn you that kids tend to forget tetra and hepta. For whatever reason, those seem to be the two that are forgotten the most. Let's go ahead and practice some of these. You can see how easy they really are. So if there's something called nitrogen dioxide, notice there's no prefix for nitrogen, so we're going to assume there's just one. And then dioxide, di indicates that there's two oxygens, so it's O2, nitrogen dioxide. You probably already knew that because you've heard of it so many times. Um, the next one, carbon monoxide. That means one carbon, mono refers to one oxygen, so just CO. Phosphorus pentachloride, so there's no prefix on the phosphorus, meaning there's just one. And then penta is the prefix for five, so we know that there is five chlorines. So something I want to point out right away, notice that the subscripts apply to the element in front of them, okay? So nitrogen dioxide means one nitrogen, two oxygens. So if I'm going to draw just a quick picture, it's something like this, nitrogen in the middle with two oxygens on the side. Realize I'm really super simplifying that. I'm just showing you for purposes of seeing how many there are, um, how many atoms there are, if you will. Okay, for number four, five, and six, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do them on your own. I bet you can. Okay, welcome back. Check and see how you did. I bet you got these right. Naming these are always kids' favorites because they're super, super easy. Let's move on. So naming binary molecular compounds. First, you're going to name the element, including a prefix if two or more atoms of that element are present. Never use the prefix mono for the first element. Next, you're going to name the second element and change the ending to "-ied". Include a prefix in all cases to show the number of atoms. So it's only the first element where you will not mention mono. In the second element, you have to. For example, number one. This, there's one phosphorus, so I'm just going to write out phosphorus. Be careful to spell it correctly. A lot of kids misspelled these on their quizzes. So phosphorus, and then I notice that there's three chlorines. So tri is the prefix 
four three, and then I change this to chlor ide okay so it shouldn't even sound right if you say trichlorine that's just weird you change the ending of the second word to ide all right number two there's one oxygen so it's oxygen just written normally and then there's two fluorines so the prefix for two is di and then i change fluorine to fluoride Another highly misspelled um, element. It's like fluoride, fluoride. So oxygen difluoride, simple. Okay, and I'm going to skip and I'm going to do number five really quickly. Nitrogen and then five iodides. So it's nitrogen and then since it's five, the prefix for that is penta and then iodide. Again, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do the three that I didn't do. All right, welcome back. I hope that you had success with these three. Again, they're pretty simple to learn. Um, so hopefully you did well on them. If not, I'll help you tomorrow in class. The last thing I want to mention is always name H2O as water and NH3 as ammonia. These are their common names. So there was a joke online about dihydrogen monoxide being poisonous and that was going to kill everybody. Um, and someone made a whole website dedicated to this. So let's go ahead and Google dihydrogen monoxide and see what we come up with. Okay, facts about dihydrogen monoxide. Let's click on that. Frequently asked questions. It says dihydrogen monoxide is a colorless and odorless chemical compound, also referred to by some as dihydrogen oxide, etc., etc. Its basis is highly reactive hydroxyl radical a species shown to mutate DNA, denature proteins, disrupt cell membranes, and chemically alter critical neurotransmitters. The atomic components of DHMO are found in a number of caustic, explosive, and poisonous compounds such as sulfuric acid, nitroglycerin, and ethyl alcohol. So you can see on here, there's all kinds of bogus um, website information online about dihydrogen monoxide because people aren't educated on how to name things correctly. So we call H2O water. And as we know, as educated people, water is completely harmless. So that's one of the reasons why knowing your nomenclature is so important. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I'll see you in class tomorrow so we can practice, practice, practice. Have a good evening.